Please welcome Peter Gorsira, Lawnmower. No. I came to consensus to make a confession. I didn't put money into Bitcoin until 2014, and the market timing hangover was intense. But luckily, I got into Ether a few months ago, and the opposite happened. So this got me thinking, you know, why did it take me so long to get into the investing in these blockchain assets? I'm someone who follows blockchain news. You know, I read about it. I'm aware of it. If I can't get into it, how is a mainstream investor going to do so? So there's a few different hurdles I found that stand in the way of mainstream retail investors investing in these blockchain assets. And I'm going to go through them real quick. One, what do you buy? What's worth buying? You know, which projects you, should you pay attention to? Ether, Ripple, Counterparty, Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. To know the value prop of all these, you have to read through technical documentation. You know, is the team good? Is the traction good? Does this have staying power? But let's say you figure that out, right? You know what you want to buy. How do you buy it? The top two crypto exchanges, Poloniex and Shapeshift, the great products that I love, shout out Forkeys if you're here, um, uh, they don't support fiat, right? So most new investors that approach this new asset class are going to expect to be able to invest in it the same way they've invested in every other asset class with their bank account. But let's say you figure that out, right? You know what you want to buy, you know how you're going to buy it. That brings us to the third and most difficult part, how are you going to store it? This part, the difficulty cannot be understated, right? You have to configure all these different crypto wallets, download all these blockchains, manage all these private keys. And furthermore, all of this is desktop based. And nowadays, most users expect a web or mobile based solution. Lawnmower solves all of these problems. With just a bank account and no prior knowledge of the blockchain scene, retail investors can start investing in blockchain technology and blockchain assets. So let me do a quick demo. Bear with me. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, so let's get that on the screen. Sweet. All right. So signing up with Lawnmower is super easy. Um, you can add any normal bank account, routing account number, or log in. So I'm going to log into a obviously fake account here so you guys don't steal my money. So sign in, choose the account you're using, and that's it. My bank account's hooked up to Lawnmower. Now Lawnmower brought me to the portfolio screen. It wants me to choose a portfolio. This right here is the real magic of Lawnmower. As a user, I don't have to know what any of these assets do, what they represent. All I need to do is pick the portfolio that I'm interested in. So we have a few sample portfolios here that represent different aspects of blockchain technology. Smart contract platforms, payment networks, and decentralized applications. In this example, I'm going to choose a smart contract portfolio because that represents a slice of blockchain technology that I believe in the most. So I choose my portfolio, and I'm brought to the dashboard. You can get a quick glance at my portfolio, including USD balance, gain over different time periods, and the prices of all the assets that I've invested in. But enough about that. Let's start putting money into this. I'm going to head to the buy sell page. Investing in your portfolio with Lawnmower is easy as could be. Simply put the amount you want to invest, 20 bucks, submit, and boom. It's that easy. We also have a recurring buy feature, and this is actually really handy. Most of these blockchain assets tend to be very volatile, as I'm sure you know. That's kind of what makes it exciting, right? But by setting up a recurring buy, you can help to manage this volatility. You know, it's kind of like a dollar cost averaging-esque strategy. OK, so let's say I've been investing for a while, right? Months and years of investing with Lawnmower. I want to check out how I'm doing. We have a nice analytics page where you can check out your performance. So stuff like percent return, average cost basis, number of buys and sells, recurring versus instant, to help you really refine your trading strategy. That's the end of the demo. So we're really, really focused on um, people you know, who read about blockchain technology in the Wall Street Journal um, and are intrigued by it. But they don't know where to get started. We're all about making it easy for them. And our interface is kind of designed to be familiar to people like that. Right, so revenue. Lawnmower is chopping green with multiple revenue streams. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we have a pricing model from, uh, similar to Acorns, if you're familiar. Um, basically, it's a asset like a threshold of assets managed, and for users below the threshold, they pay a fixed recurring monthly fee, and above the threshold, you pay a percent of the assets we're managing for you. Uh, we also have a rev share set up with both of our partner exchanges one of whom is Coinbase, uh, who also helps us with like KYC, AML, regulatory compliance. So we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So that's all well and good. But let's talk about market size real quick, because I know it's a huge concern with all these altcoins, right? The market cap right now of all altcoins is about $8.5 billion, depending on which day you check it, right? But I think with something like this, we need to take a step back and look at it more qualitatively. You know, Our thesis at Lawnmower is that open blockchains, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, will enable unprecedented use cases. And each of these use cases 
will spawn an explosion in blockchain assets. We'll be responsible for everything from powering decentralized applications to representing items in virtual worlds to allowing stocks to be traded faster. This is the thesis that Lawnmower is built on. We're riding the blockchain asset wave. Thank you. I'm a uh, early adopter of Lawnmower. I love your app. It's fantastic. Uh, well done. I love how you progress from uh, taking some spare chains to uh, now being an investment platform and kind of closing the distance. That's that's fantastic. Um, uh, how are the uh, the altcoins, the uh, digital assets, Bitcoin secured on your end? Okay, so we have a partnership with Coinbase on the Bitcoin side. Um, the other side is this is the thing I showed you on my phone is like a private beta. Basically, we have a partnership with a cryptocurrency exchange, um, so we're not managing that right now. So it's managed by an exchange, not by you. Correct. Yeah. And that exchange, what's the security model of the exchange? Uh, we're still talking to them. It's still, I can't really talk about which exchange it is, but. We're picking, you know, it's, the whole process is vetting the exchanges. Are they compliant? Do they have that security model? So we're looking at stuff like that. But we aren't managing the actual storage of the assets. Yeah, kind of on that vein, you said with Coinbase, you don't have to worry about regulatory stuff. Um, but you're really depending on another institution for your regulatory security. Can you give me some more, you know, what you're thinking in terms of the regulatory risks of Lawnmower, not of Coinbase, but of you? Sure, yeah. Um, the risk, you said? Right, so, well, let me first say that, like, uh, every lawnmower user is a Coinbase user. So when I say, like, they take our regulatory risk, like, I really mean it. Um, the, the, uh, the account sign-up is actually white-labeled. So you're signing up through lawnmower forms, but every lawnmower user has a Coinbase account. Um, so we really depend on that to manage the regulatory risk. The only part you could really say would be at risk would be the transfer of, so we buy Bitcoins with fiat in their Coinbase account, and then this Bitcoin is sent to the cryptocurrency exchange. You could maybe draw something there and be like, hey, you know, this actual transfer is, you know, money transmission or something. But each, in each case, their account's managed by the users themselves. So we don't really touch money at any point. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So I guess even beyond just regulatory risk, your risk is that you are associated with Coinbase and you're depending on them. There's a dependence. Yeah, and I think it's always a balance. Like that's, we obviously dealt with that when we are creating our product. But for a small startup, we want to do something like this. The legal costs for becoming a money transmitter are is impossible, basically, right? So our dependence on Coinbase lets us to like build fast and, and move quickly, basically. Can you give us a sense of the fees? You know, if you, if you have a balance of six thousand, as you showed in the demo, how much does that cost? We're consumer? looking at like 025 percent, twenty five basis points, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Great. about a dollar a month for the fixed monthly one. Very pretty much the same as Acorns, if you're familiar with it, mm -hmm. their pricing model. One more question. Great job. Cool. Right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah.